This is a demonstration of the Axon 2. On the right is the Axon 2. On the left is the original Axon. As you can see, they're the same size and dimension. Screw holes are the same, or about the same thickness and weight. The Axon 2 is different, and I'm going to show you why. Now, it already has a USB connection like the original Axon. It just plugs right in. You could upload programs or download data very simply. Now, you could also connect a hardware programmer. You don't need a hardware programmer, but it goes right into the ISP connection right there. The wire just goes straight across. This is the hardware program right here. Now, you've probably never seen this with another microcontroller, but the Axon 2 has a feature where I can hook up an alligator clip. So there's a pad at the bottom left right here where it securely connects on to the ground. So I could shake it and it won't come loose. So you could connect it to oscilloscopes, multimeters, etc. Speaking of multimeters, you could also hook up a probe, multimeter probe, directly to a special little hole right here. So you could lock on your probe and it's very firm, very reliable. So you could easily get measurements without having to worry about your probe slipping and shorting wires. There are several easy ways to power up your Axon. The easiest way is to get a 6 volt battery, recommended nickel metal hydride, and it has to have a high tech connector here. And you just plug it in to the top left header. It says BAT and your LED display will turn on as so. Now you might also find other batteries such as this larger 6 volt nickel metal hydride but then you'll see it has this really weird connector er, 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 doesn't connect right so then what you make is an adapter one end has the weird connector the other end has the high tech connector so I just plug it in like this and then the other end connects right into here now with every axon you get a high tech on off switch on off now one end connects to your battery so we'll just plug that in to your battery. There you go. And then the other end connects straight into the top left connector again. And so I could turn it on or off. On, off. On the website you can find many different programs, example programs using the Axon. And one of them is using the Dimension Engineering 3-axis accelerometer which is this green board right here. And I've just connected some wires to it to make the demonstration simpler. The first three wires are X, Y, and Z axis. And then the next two is just power and ground. It's very simple. Now all analog sensors plug into the top analog port, ADC, analog to digital converter. I'm going to plug it into 0, 1, and 2 right there. And this sensor could take 5 volts. So I'm going to plug, plug it in to the regulated 5 volts right here. Now, connection's done. That was simple. I flip the switch to turn it on. Now it's on. Now what it's doing is it's outputting a value to the LED display. You can't really see it, so I'm going to turn off lights. Now what you see right now is the number 4. All right? So I rotate this. 0. The number just goes up. So I rotate this even more. So what it's doing is it's just outputting an analog signal from here to the axon. Axon processes it, and then it does whatever you want. In this case, I wanted it to just change the value right there. Now you could control more than just the LED display. You could also control a servo. So here I have an evil robot claw that I got from the last robot war. And there's just a simple servo connection here that I could plug straight into A0 of the axon. Very simple. Already done. I turn it on, twitches a little, and it's controlled right now by this accelerometer, so I'll grab it very carefully. But as I rotate it one way, the robot claw opens, or as I rotate it the other way, the robot claw closes. So we have an open and a close. We have a release cute bunny operation, or a grab your hapless victim and choke them operation. So there you have it controlling an evil robot claw with an accelerometer. The next thing I'm going to show you is this LED array that I have. It's uh, 14 LEDs and 14 resistors. It's just a custom circuit that I made. It has a female header right here that I could plug right in. So I'm going to plug it into the digital I.O. on the far left here. 
plugged in. And this is a ground wire, so I just plug it into ground wherever I want. There we go. Now, this circuit's going to be controlled by a sharp IR. So I just plug the sharp IR into the analog line, and I just want to do 12 because I feel like it, right? And of course, I want the whole thing to be powered by 6 volt NIM battery with an on off switch. And it's going to be plugged right into BAT at the very top left here. Now I've already programmed it, so all I have to do is turn it on, and it's on. And what it's doing is converting the distance of an object in front of the sensor into the number of LEDs to shine. And I can turn off the lights so you can see that a little better. The next sensor is a sonar. This is an older version of a Devantec sonar connected digitally through the trigger line right here. And there's also the echo line right here. And it's powered by 5 volts and ground, just wired here. Then there's my LED array. Now, just by changing the distance in front of the sensor changes the output of the LED array. It could also change the output of any other device connected to the Exxon too. This project uses a servo which I will plug into port L3. Port L3 just so happens to be a hardware PWM port, great for servos. This project will also use a digital compass here. There are four wires I've soldered onto it. The red and black are power and ground. It's a 3.3 volt sensor, so I plug into 3.3 volts. Also uses I squared C, so I plug it into I squared C right here. And I've already powered it up with a six volt NEM battery. I've also already programmed it, so I just need to turn it on, like such. Now, the digital compass is sending angle data to the axon, and then the axon is taking that angle data and converting it to an angle for the servo. In other words, the servo is matching the angle of the digital compass. Now this sensor is an MPX5100 pressure sensor by Motorola. It's a 5 volt sensor, so I just give it 5 volts. This red wire here I soldered on and heat shrink. Ground wires in the center and signal wire on the far right here. So it's analog sensor. So I plug it into analog here and 14. I've already uploaded my program, so I just turn it on. Now, I need the blow-in to here to change the pressure. So give me a second.